Chicago Where the fire serve cold But the wolves and the hawks never shiver in the snow The bulls keep it running, the Sox run the south The Cubs run the north, but the Bears run the house Two Chicago sports fans got their ears to the street Any team make a move and they never skip a beat And in this house, this is where we be Welcome to the show with E-Rock and Big Z Welcome, 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 welcome to Chicago. Coming from the True Chicago Sports Fan Cave, this is the TCSF Podcast with E-Rock, Big Z, and Gigantor. Yo. He's yo. back. <laughs> Episode 60 is brought to you by 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, ACSI, and Great Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to gritclothingcode.com and get your official TCSF Podcast t-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TrueFan15 for 15% off your entire order. That is TrueFan15. Get your official TCSF t shirts now. Go get them! In the studio with me is my homie E-Rock. What up, E? What's up, Z? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. If you are a first-timer or a long-timer, please remember to hit that subscribe button, that notify button, and go ahead and give us a review and five stars on your listening app of choice. Ladies and gentlemen, do you like what you hear? Yes. Do you like our show? You like coming out here and laughing with us every week? Do us a favor, share the show with five of your friends and have them tell five of their friends and so on and so on and so on forever. Forever. <laughs> and don't forget, you can support the show with a monthly subscription at anchor.fm slash true Chicago sports fans. Go on over there, click on support, and you can become a subscriber for as low as 99 cents a month. Okay there. Uh, <laughs> before we get into it, let me bring in the homie Gigantor to tell the fans about last week's event with the CPD Knights. That's right, guys. We were at the third annual CPD Knights Back to School Baseball Clinic. We gave away some school supplies along with the Caps 14th District crew. We had a great time. And as always, it was a great event. We gave back to the community. Had a lot of people out there. I mean, it was fantastic. So shout out to Danny, Eddie, Eric, and the whole CPD Knights crew. Uh, thanks again for partnering up with us on a, on a great event. Yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. We gave away some backpacks, some supplies, um, you know, a clinic, baseball clinic for the kids. Uh, Bertoli's Pizza was out there. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was just a really cool event. It was great to see uh, the kids come out on a hot, hot day. Uh, we were we were drenched, but it was a great time. And it was a great event with, uh, with the CPD Knights. And uh, we also will be at the Comedians vs. Cops charity softball game coming up on sunday uh we're gonna be there it's a ten dollar donation all of the proceeds go to the injured officer uh the partner of ella french mm-hmm. officer yanez is in the hospital right now so all the proceeds from this uh benefit or from this uh charity game, game. Mm-hmm. is gonna go to benefit his family so that's gonna be awesome come out uh yeah we'll g- be at little cups field humble yeah. park you know it's uh 1339 luis muñoz marine drive there you go september 5th 1 p.m start yeah. Out there, come yeah. on out. Like I said, ten dollar donation and uh, proceeds go to a great cause. Yeah, come on, have some fun and uh, laugh at us. So, Z, what were you up to this week? Because we did not <laughs> see you, sir. <laughs> I actually had a job. Uh, oh, 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 <laughs> wow, Mister! Three months off in the summer, talking about a job. Get out of here! I, I, I got a job. Yup, yup. Okay. <laughs> now it was my first week with uh, actual students in the building, so I could not take that day off. It was um, not bad, to be honest with you. Um, really just had one small incident with one sixth grader. Okay. But, uh, you know, I squashed that real quick. And, Did you uh, guys box? Huh? Did you guys box? I, I didn't <laughs> want to take their home away. Uh, uh, no, so uh, that's going to be squashed. I'm not having read my email yet, but um, once I'm on the clock, I'll read that email. Uh, that on the response, but there you uh, go. no, the kids were really good. Um, you know, the building is really cold, which is great because you can always put on layers. <laughs> <laughs> so the gym is really, really ice. It's an ice box. So I, you know, I'm in shorts and a sweater, which looks weird, but uh, you know, that's a PE uniform. Well, you know, we're, we are actually starting to get into sweater weather. Football's mm-hmm. coming up. And I know a lot of people, you're talking about getting back to work. There's a lot of people out there that are very anxious to get back to work. So let me guys, let me tell you guys a little bit about our friends over at ACSI. With over 50 expert technicians in the Chicago land area, ACSI offers a one-stop shop for telecom wiring. Whether residential cable installation, fiber to the home, or commercial structured cable wiring. Guys, let me tell you the most impressive thing about ACSI. 
During these hard times, the ACSI crew did their thing during the COVID-19 pandemic, and ACSI was awarded HACIA's 2020 Contractor of the Year Award. The best part is that ACSI is growing bigger and better than ever. ACSI is now hiring for field sales technicians and project managers. Check out ACSI.tech, that's ACSI.tech, and click on Careers to Apply Today. Go get you a job. Oh, man, we got a lot to talk about this week. The final Bears preseason game. Uh, We got to talk about if we think Andy Dalton really is QB1. You mean skill-wise or (laughs) what Nagy said? (laughs) On the the chart. paper. Yeah. The Cubs visit the G-spot for the continuation of the Crosstown Classic. Mm -hmm. The Bulls send a big man over to Cleveland and is always stirring the pot. And what you looking at? Wait, who goes on vacation in Cleveland? (laughs) No one. So we got lots of good stuff to talk about this week. But first, this is The Big Three with Big Z. Thanks, E-Rock. I'm Big Z, and you're not. (laughs) Now for the stories of the week. All right, former Major League Baseball outfielder Juan Encarnacion was arrested in the Dominican Republic after he allegedly sexually assaulted his daughter in the Dominican Republic. Uh, The Dominican Republic's National District Providence confirmed to ESPN. Encarnacion's daughter was allegedly assaulted by, by him in May. The child's mother said that in the complaint, his daughter was not named uh, because she's a minor. Uh, Encarnacion was set to be uh, presented before a judge in Santo Domingo on Saturday. Um, he was born in Las Matas del Parfan, which wow. sits, um, yeah, I'm, I'm on a roll here, sits about 20 kilometers from the island's border, uh, that, which borders Haiti. Uh, per the report, authorities allege that Encarnacion entered his daughter's room while she was sleeping and touched private parts of her body. The 45-year-old is facing a maximum penalty of up to 15 years. It should be life. Uh, fuck this dude. Fuck him. Fuck him uh, uh, all the way from here to hell and back. I got two daughters, and, and and you know I'm. This right here makes me want to go take the bat and break somebody's knees right now. This is absolutely repulsive, disgusting, terrible. Fuck this dude. Hey, yeah. Hey, disgusting man. Sorry. I'm pretty sure he'll be taken care of in the jail. Yeah, with that oh, fucking yeah. bat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, story number dos. Let's, let's turn this around a little bit here. All right, Baltimore Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins. So if he's on your fantasy team, ugh, yep, yep. has a season-ending torn ACL in his left knee. The MRI performed last Sunday confirmed a, a source told ESPN's Adam Schefter. So you know it's gospel. Mm. Dobbins was carted off the field after injuring the knee during the opening drive of the Ravens' 37-3 route of the Washington team. Yeah, that's because they don't have a name yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was at FedEx Field. The second round pick from a year ago, Dobbins was entering his first season as Baltimore's featured running back. So the, the Ravens have had this thing where they had something like, you know, 18 or 19 consecutive preseason wins, which all, which all completely means dick right now because your starting running back is out for the count. Torn at ACL, he finally gets his shot to start. And uh, this this sucks, man. This sucks for a young team. I mean, I, I like I like the direction that they're going, but uh, but uh, you know, I I hate it, especially when you look at Lamar Jackson, a guy that's really starting to come into his own, could possibly be a top ten quarterback this year, and his running mate is out for the count, and, and that sucks. It puts more pressure on him, and he he's always been viewed as a running quarterback, and he's yeah. been in the pocket the last couple of years. And that's because he's had some running back help, and, and the receivers that have been surrounding him have been a lot better. So when you're losing, you're losing one of those big cogs in your offense, yeah. it's going to affect the way he does business. Well, and there was a little bit of rumors, too, I, I want to say about uh, their tight end, Mark Andrews, having issues with injuries, too. So, I mean, they really have to make sure that they're on point with what they're doing. Now, you know that that defense is going to be ferocious no matter what. Mm-hmm. But you're in a division where um, the Steelers have gotten better, mm-hmm. okay, because they got a, a good young running back in Najee Harris. Uh, you got Big Ben coming back for another year. You got Claypool coming in. And so you're going to have um, – and that's going to be a strong team, and that's always going to be your rival. And not to mention Cleveland. Right, you got Cleveland, Cleveland is, yeah. is always, is just gotten better over the years. And now, you know, you look at uh, the receivers that they have, the running backs that they have. I mean, Kareem Hunt is over there. I think now we're going to see a lot of Kareem Hunt for the Browns. Um, you also got Cincinnati Chubb, in that division, right? You got Chubb, you got Cincinnati. Joe Burrow is coming back yeah. from that injury, and mm-hmm. they got a lot of good players over there. And and I think 
you know, I think since he's still going to be the bottom of the barrel in that division, but, you know, you have a dog fight in that division. So that's where it's really going to hurt Baltimore. And you got lots of young talent coming in. They're all hungry. They all want to make a name for themselves. So it's going to be interesting. Yep. All right. Story number three. Eve. I gotta. I always gotta find a story that you're gonna like, man. <laughs> so, E, do you like spotted cow? I do. I do. All right. Yes. So, funny enough, um, there was a spotted cow at a McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> was this in Wisconsin? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> so, Jessica Nielsen of uh, Mosini. 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 Oh well. Uh, yeah. Well. Yeah, 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 I'm not uh. French. Uh, pulled pulled into the drive through at McDonald's in Marshfield on Thursday and said she looked up to see a cow in the backseat of a Buick sedan. Three cars ahead of her. Okay. Uh, she said, uh, Lisa said that the family of the cow owner saw the post and contacted her. So she made a post, a video. So it's literally three cars in front of her. There's a Buick and it looked like a fake cow and the cow started moving. So she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa shit, that's a real cow. So <laughs> she literally spotted a cow. Right. So you got... The spotted cow in Wisconsin. I mean, it sounds like a Packer fan. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to McDonald's. Can you imagine how scared this cow is oh, going that, to McDonald's? That- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do they use real meat? <laughs> when, when I'm you, loving it. Yeah, yeah. When you gotta when you gotta pick the pieces of leather out of your Big Mac, then you know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so funny enough, there was more than one cow in there. Actually, there was two other calves. There was three calves uh, in the back. Yeah. Well, I mean. It is, it is Wisconsin. Who knows that are about to do it? I mean, I, I was thinking, you know, it was a fake cow, like the ones that are the Chick fil A ones that they put on the billboards. Mm, like, yeah, yeah, you know, eat more chicken. Eat more chicken, right? Yeah. I thought those were those, but, you know, real ones. So you said these these uh, calves were actually purchased? Yes. This sounds like an arranged marriage for Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> that is a shotgun marriage, ladies and gentlemen. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with E Rock and Big Z. Yeah. Today's guest host is Giganta. What up, G? What's up, guys? How you doing? Cool, cool, cool. Let's get it rolling. Let's move it on. This is The Loop, our Chicago Sports Roundup, where we keep you in the loop. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome, welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Yo, E, what's going on with our beloved Chicago Bears? Jesper Horstead, you heard me right. Who? Jesper <laughs> Horstead, the former Princeton wide receiver who the Bears signed as UFA in 2019. He was the star of the show for the Bears in the third and final preseason game. He came away with three touchdowns and only five receptions for a total of 104 yards. QB1, Andy Dalton did not play, so the young buck Justin Fields got the start. He went 7-10. and 10. For 54 yards and a touchdown. Nick Foles came in for the second half and went 10 for 14 for 142 and two touchdowns. Foles pretty much had a better preseason than the presumed starter, the Red Rifle. And the rumors are still flying that the Indianapolis Colts will come scoop him up either in a trade or if Foles is released for some reason. Hey, Gigantor, you uh, drive those rigs, so uh, <laughs> give, give him a ride down to Indianapolis, bro. Hey, gladly. <laughs> can have him. So, I mean, yeah, the Colts are in desperate need for a quarterback because Carson Wentz, uh, Foles' old teammate, he's out with an injury, of course, and now their backup, Sam Ellinger, is out for at least four weeks with an ACL strain. Ouch. Uh, Foles is owed $14.3 million over this season and next. Yeah. yeah. Free up some cap space, though, at least. At least we'll get to free up some cap space. Yeah, that, that would help us out. I mean, right, right now, I think the only – way that the Bears would want to keep him or or need him is if they think that either Dalton or Fields are not ready for some reason, but they'd be smart to get whatever they can for him at this point because, you know, if both Dalton and Fields are injured, they're fucked anyways. I'm in danger! <laughs> I mean, come on, let's be real. At hey. that point, just tank, right? 
We have a horse then. We should be okay. <laughs> yeah, we can't throw the ball. <laughs> the Bears open the season on September 12th. That's a Sunday night game, ladies and gentlemen. This is versus the Rams at SoFi Stadium. I think we agree that this, I think we agree that we think this will this will be more than just likely a loss. Are we okay? Yeah. I think we agree that we think there's a lot of things in there. I think we all agree that we think this will be more more than likely a loss, but what do you think the Bears can do to pull out a win? I think that the Bears need to put in the young kid. That's what I think. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Rifle is going to start the game, and I just think it, if they stick to the run game, it's going to alleviate a lot of pressure off the quarterback, a lot of the receivers, and so forth. Um, all right, so... Can 39-year-old Jason Peters play like a Pro Bowl uh, caliber player? We know Trevor Jenkins will not be available, and uh, they have James Daniels back. So we were looking at Jason Peters. They brought in a guy that was on the Philly, uh, Philadelphia uh, Eagles for a long, long time. Very good player. But again, like you said, he's 39 years old. James Daniels is back. But we saw Jason Peters and Jermaine and Fetty come back and not play very well in that preseason game. Yeah, it takes time. They look rusty. So, again... Whatever they do is going to be dependent on the line, and it's a good chance that Nagy and Pace and the rest of the organization know that the line is suspect right now. It sure is. So why put the so kid out there? So why would you put the kid out there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get the kid hurt. Yeah, I mean, you already saw what happened the other game. We got hit in the head. Yeah, exactly. I, I say they give Jason Peters a try. Worst case scenario, most improved player. If not, you yeah, cut him. I if mean, not, you cut him. Yeah, I mean, but but exactly. the, the problem is they got rid of Leno, so they need him to play well. Yeah, they do. Because if if you know, I think they got rid of uh, Leno prematurely because now you look at the kid. The kid's not ready because True. he's hurt, and there was reports that he was hurt and that teams knew about it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine, but you look at there's a reason why he slid from where he was actually originally projected, where the Bears were sitting at, at pick number twenty. He slid down to what all the way like number thirty nine. So, I mean, he, we know that Tevin Jenkins, when you look at him as a player, he's got the tenacity, he's got that, that grit that mm-hmm. we want offensive linemen to have. But if you're not healthy, you can't help anyone. No. Shenanigans. He's, he's going to play, what, five games if he's healthy? Hopefully. But, well, that's the thing is that what they said, the most important ability is availability. And mm-hmm. if you're not out there, you, you know, you can't play. That's right. All right. Uh, can Andy Dalton handle all the things that Matt Nagy requires him to do at quarterback? We seen last year what happened with Nick Foles is like I want to keep the ball moving, yep. and Nagy's like, no, slow it down. So are we gonna have that type of uh, uh, issue again? Well, I mean, the thing is, is that in a Matt Nagy system, you need to be able to throw from the pocket as well as scramble when mm-hmm. needed. And yeah, that he was can't always, scramble. That was always the issue with Mitch was that he could scramble, but he can't get through progressions quick enough to be an efficient pocket pocket, pocket passer. passer. Yeah, and you look at Dalton, you know that Dalton has some escapability, but he's not. I, I mean, do we think right now, especially seeing what we saw out of Mitch last week, is Mitch Trubisky better than Andy Dalton? Yes. I think so. Yes. I think I think Dalton's more comfortable in like a shotgun position, yeah. is what it is. With this uh, setup we have right now, I don't think he's in the last very long. I mean, obviously, he's QB1, and, and like I said, he might be the sacrificial lamb that we're all sitting here like, put mm-hmm. in the kid, put in the kid. Well, they know something we don't know. You know, because realistically, I think we think that the, the kid is more talented overall, and he has a much higher ceiling than either Mitch or Dalton, right. or Foles for that matter. But the, the simple fact is is that if your O-line is not solid, do you really want to put the kid out there? No, no. Nope. No, because you're, you're, what you're going to do is you're going to scar him. He's going to have, like, he's going to see phantoms and, and the ghosts when I he gets hit and stuff. Listen, I, man. He's our new toy. Let's not break him right away, okay? Yeah, and <laughs> How about that? You know, the thing is, too, is that I, I don't think you're going to break him. I, I think that he'll be able to I, – I just don't want him to have that, like, bad taste in his mouth, yeah. you know, knowing that – because you know that he knows what's going on with the O-line as well. It's not like he's blind to it. So right, he, he has, he has reps with the first line, right. So if he sees that they're out there sucking it up, he's like, well, I have to compensate for that. And I think, you know, a big thing, too, with Fields is that he'll be able to compensate for some of the mistakes that Nagy's going to make. True, you know. So that's the that's the other caveat. Once we have this O line nice and strong, I mean, I think they got a much better chance. And I think right. he's learned enough from the guys, you know. Oh, you have great doing. mentors. Oh yeah, yeah great. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. He, he can he can adapt. All right. So can can Khalil Mack play like he did in his first season in Chicago? That's the question here because he, we need him to be the A one player that we had. The Raiders contract uh, contacted the Bears about trying to get him back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I laughed when I read this. This is just. <laughs> Come back. You're right. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure Pace laughed in her face and hung up the phone. 
Uh, but the defense is not getting any younger. And the thing is that we have a young quarterback, and now our, our defense is aging out. Mm-hmm. So um, let's see what else we got. We got Hicks looking for a new contract. Fuller is in Denver. And Eddie Jackson has not performed to what we saw him in that Bears 12-4 uh, 2018 season. So he's not flying around like he used to. I think the bigger question is not can, is will he? Um, he can, obviously. He's a great player. He slowed down a pinch. You know, he's getting older. But will he come out explosive? I, I think so. I think he's motivated. I, I think a lot of it has to do that he's been on the field for every single play. He needs That's a breather. It. You know, the, the thing is that we have to remember is that this is now going to be Khalil Mack's third defensive coordinator in Chicago with Sean Desai coming sure. in. Okay. And Desai has been around for – he's actually been in the league for quite some time as, as, a, uh, as a coach. But, you know – we know we know what Khalil Mack can do, and I think for the last couple of years, our excuse has always been, "Well, he's double teamed. He's double teamed." Well, sometimes he wasn't double teamed, and he still didn't get there. So, right. I mean, we know that he wants to, but again, you know, if if I think also as a defensive player, you have to see that the offense has a true chance, and if you're spending so much time on the field, you know that hey, they're not holding on to the ball. So. Just like, you know, we talked about A-Rob being a very important cog in the development of Justin Fields, we have to also realize that, yes, this this defense is getting older and they are very talented, but they have to have that want to and they have to be able to see that the offensive side of the ball is also holding up their end of the bargain. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of the problem that with the Bears has been lately that the defense is out there and they're tired because the offense go, keeps going three and out. Yeah, right. so they definitely the, need that breather. Yeah, so if the defense is playing, you know, 45 minutes a game, I mean, of course, it's not going to be beneficial to them. Now, hey, go ahead. I would say as a big guy, I mean, it, it takes a toll on you, and every once in a while, you know, you need that water. You need to sit down on the side. Yeah. Hopefully that offense oxygen. does their job, you know, give them a little breather. A breather. So we know that the Bears released Javon Wims, the, the notorious player who liked to uh, <laughs> get into fights with Saints, Saints players. Yeah. Um, they still have uh, Riley Ridley on the team, and he's actually been pr- playing pretty well for special teams. But in general, the Bears struggled on, in special teams during the preseason. That's something they're definitely going to have to shore up, especially when they're trying to fight for field position and their uh, offense is not as secure as we would like it to be. Mm-hmm. They, they also have uh, the, the, the young guys. they got Daz Newsom, who yeah. looks like he's going to be a, a good player, a speedy guy. Um, and, you know, there was also talk about the Bears going after Odell Beckham Jr. in a trade with, with Cleveland for, for Hakeem Hicks. And Hakeem Hicks is looking for that contract as well. So, I mean, that would be an interesting move because I think they do have a lot of guys on, on defense that they can rely on. But we also saw what happened with the Bears when uh, Hicks was injured last year and they were getting gashed right up the middle. So, Big time. A guy like Hicks who wants to end his career with the Bears, and he's come out and said that. Again, he's getting, I want to say he's about 32 years old. Mm -hmm. He had a pretty bad uh, arm injury a couple years ago in that Raiders game. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I I really think one of the other things that we're hearing people saying is that, you know, Nagy has been riding the coattails of that 2018 season Mm -hmm. and the the defense that season for the last couple years. I mean, do you believe that to be true? I think Nagy's pretty much like focus on i'm just gonna worry about the offense and uh you you're the, the coordinator yeah it's a new guy right there yeah, yeah. you take care of the defense over there and, I, and uh, i'm gonna go look at my denny's menu and uh get my rudy tootie fresh and fruities i think his his train of thought on that is all right these guys were good in 2018 i'm giving you a proven uh system here do your thing and i don't have to worry about it and like, like you said he's riding those coattails yeah for sure he's got all these good players except three years later they might not be as fresh as they used to be. You know, I think the, the biggest thing that we can kind of look at is, is the fact that they just completely and totally fucked up last season. When you took sure. out Mitch when you did and basically said, hey, we don't want you, they treated it like a throwaway season. It was almost like they knew that, that Mitch was going to be their scapegoat. And I also think that now... That's not fair to the defense. It's not fair to the defense. No. It's not fair to Mitch either. And the thing is now is that you have Justin Fields up there, and I feel like this this organization this coaching staff Mm -hmm. this uh front office is acting like they have a free year because justin fields is their free pass well you know he's just a rookie and it's almost like i wonder if sometimes they they coach or they draft or they acquire players in order to keep their jobs rather than to make the team better and they need to be careful because by boosting him up putting him on that pedestal if for some reason he doesn't pan out the way we want him to 
then what are they going to do? They're going to turn their back on him right away. Like, oh, man, this guy was a bust. Uh, we got him, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't he's not going to be a bust. No, and well, I, I know he's think, not going to, but I'm just saying if it went that way. But I think I think the way that Nagy talks and knowing that he's a former quarterback and knowing that he has quarterbacks backs, for, the, for a lack of a better term, mm-hmm. I think that we can be fairly confident that, you know, especially with a guy like Justin Fields who essentially fell into their lap, they're going to do whatever they can to make him successful because, again, that is going to boost up and it's going to it's going to try to get some of the stink off of Mitch, Mitch Trubisky into that uh, draft room, you know. And hopefully it'll attract some better wide receivers as well. So, d- so you know, now that I have a Cubs fan here in the in the studio with me, let me ask you a question. <laughs> no, no, seriously. All right, seriously. here we go. So, you know, we 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 talked before about Justin Fields versus Derrick Rose, which player we were more excited to have on the team. So now that we sat here, Cubs fans, and, and, and I'm kind of more of the, you know, the business side of it. We talked about it a lot prior to the season, where they were at this point of the season, who they're going to trade off, who they're going to have a fire sale. But seeing a lot of the fans being upset about Rizzo and KB and Javi and, and Kimbrell and whoever else being gone. Right. Does, does looking forward as a Cubs fan, looking forward to the potential of Justin Fields, does it help? take away some of that sting of what's going on with the Cubs this year? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely it does, because we have hope again. You know, it's like, okay, some people pull the winner and says, I myself am happy for the guys. They all went out to do their own thing. You got uh, Bryant in San Francisco doing his thing. You got Rizzo winning on a tear in New York, but then he got COVID, which kind of sucks. Javi's being Javi. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but the fact that Justin Fields is a fresh pair of legs, a fresh quarterback who's really smart, learning from these guys. You know, it, it motivates me to say, hey, you know, we might go to the championship. We might, you know, do something. It might not happen, it but gives, guess it what? Gives it gives you that glimmer hope. of hope, there as, is hope as a fan. There you is know hope. I mean? So I, I just think that, that uh, you know, for especially what Cubs fans went through for 100 and whatever years, and then... 108. Yeah, and then... Yeah, okay. It's 108 stitches on a baseball. Come on, guys. I, I know baseball. Relax. Yeah, I'm not trying to dig a dig. That's the socks, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to dig... Yeah, you could have let that... And here he... Hey, uh, here's a shovel. Yeah. No. He's like 108. No, no. Uh, 34 days, 24 hours. I don't know how many days. Hey. You hey. had a sign outside the stadium. Hey. Hey. I'm just messing with you. Hey. <laughs> Shush! <laughs> I'm excited for Justin Fields as a as a Bears fan, and I think the other thing too is that that Justin Fields being good is going to bring Cubs and Sox fans together because we're all yes. Bears fans. Yeah, we're all Bears fans at the end of the day. So yeah. speaking of being all uh, uh, on the same page as far as our fandom is concerned, <laughs> which other team you want to talk about now? Tell us what's going on with the Chicago Bulls. Oh boy, the Chicago Bulls have, have traded Larry, Larry, Larry. Larry. Market in to the Cleveland Cavaliers so you can get the vacation at the mistake by the lake, brother. Uh, <laughs> so Cleveland gets market in from the Chicago Bulls in a signing trade, part of a three way deal with the Portland Trailblazers. Okay. Cleveland Cavaliers acquired the Bulls restricted free agent um, as part of a three team signing trade agreement. Cleveland is signing market in to a four year, $67 million contract. Okay. It's a flyer. Yeah, I it's mean, a flyer. Definitely. The, the the problem with Lowry is that they soured on him early. He was soured by the Garpax era. He really never had a coach that believed in him. Boylan messed him up. He sucks. Yeah, Boylan messed him up. That I, why that guy should not even be able to uh, uh, be allowed to watch basketball on TV. <laughs> well, that part is I actually liked Lowry. I no. got crap for it. There's nothing wrong with Lowry. I liked him, but yeah, he was. I don't know. I, I, I think I think his name is Lowry, like the season, right? Yeah. Lowry. Yeah. Lowry. Well, he needed some seasoning in the Chicago area. Nice. You know, okay. Yeah, some stuff's on, right? Cavs are sending forward Larry Nance Jr. to Portland Trailblazers and a 2023 second round pick via the Denver Nuggets to Chicago in the Chicago trade. Wow, that's a lot of moving parts. Portland trades forward Derek Jones Jr. and a lottery protected 2022 first round pick to Chicago. So we get a player. And a first rounder and a second rounder. Right. Legacy player. Larry Nance Jr. Yep. No, oh, we no, 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 we get Derrick Jones. We get Derrick Jones. Oh, he's, a, get, he's, oh, the, he's a dunker. Uh, Larry Nance right. Jr. goes over there. I forgot my bad. All right, so Derrick Jones Jr. is a good defender, especially as a shot blocker on the wing. Uh, he is he was one of two forwards last season that registered a block percentage of at least three point five and started at least twenty games. So, so it's I a mean, bench yeah, player. Yeah. Good yeah. play. Good player. Uh three point five blocks a game? 
I mean, that's solid right there. You can't look the the Bulls' biggest thing. One of the biggest things that we've been watching over the last couple of years is their complete and total lack of defense and turnovers. Those are the big things that have been hurting the Bulls. Not since Tibbs, right? Right, exactly. So I mean, like they really step. Lowry being gone is a boost to that because he would just stand there like he had his, his foot stuck in the in the which way did he go in the floorboards? It was ridiculous. And don't forget, Derrick Jones and Alex Caruso are very good uh, defenders, and they've proven to be tenacious. Zach has improved also over the years, and this is really where we're going to start to see the Acme plan start mm-hmm. to come into effect. So. Every time I hear Acme, I, I see the, um, the Wiley Coyote smashing into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, I mean, yeah, like I said, the, the biggest thing that we can pull out of here is the fact that they're really trying to shore up their defense. And, again, you look at all the – like Lonzo Ball, very good defender. Mm-hmm. DeMar DeRozan, a, a very good scorer, and, and he can defend. So, I mean, the look of this Bull squad is completely changing. I'm trying to think. Who who still why is is uh, Zach the only player from the from the last regime standing? Uh, Kobe White. Oh yeah, Kobe, Kobe White. So that, those two. That's uh, it. I'm not sure. I know Denzel is gone. I know Felicio is gone. Hey hey. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> the young man's gone. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot. I of, think I think they turned around the entire team already. Possibly. Quite possibly. I mean, but you I'm happy remember, about it. You got to remember, basketball is only 15 a, uh, a team. You know what yeah, I mean? So you got a small spots, roster. Yeah. So I mean, it's easy to turn over. I mean, look at football. They probably turn over 20 players a year. Yeah, well, well, they have Felicia on the damn bench for like six years. Yeah. He was he doing whatever he does. <laughs> <laughs> I see the wheels turning already. <laughs> All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a pause for the cause, and we'll be right back. With three up and three down after work from our sponsor. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. <laughs> Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15. TrueFan15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with E Rock and Big Z. Yeah. Time to touch bases with our baseball teams. This is three up and three down. I think I'll perplex him with my slow ball. One, two, three strikes, you're out. Yo, E, what's going on with those Cubbies? Go, Cubs, go. Go, Cubs, go. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gone. White Sox, White Sox. Go, go, White Sox. Let's go, 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 White Sox. Two walks in the inning for Kyle Hendricks, very rare. He hit him. Well, there's no way in the world that he wanted to hit him with Abreu coming up next and what Abreu has done to the Cubs and notably to Hendricks. Yeah, loaded without a hit. Well, you know it's the last thing in the world he wanted to do, load the bases for this guy. Here hear the Sox fans chanting MVP and Abreu in the air out in the deep center, and it's over the head of Ortega. Goodwin scores. Hernandez is in. It is a double. That is huge. It's five to one. That's why I didn't want that guy up there. He owns him, and he's an RBI king. And he's over 100 on the year. Yes, he is. Absolute missile. And now Eloy Jimenez to right field. Hayward back. Eloy Jimenez continues to torture Cub pitching. Thanks, Cubs. All right, Cubs, Cubs, Cubs. We got more Cubs. A couple of Cubs moves. Uh, Adbert Adsley has been uh, sent to rehab assignment in Iowa uh, because he has not been good and he's been injured. So they also had a guy, uh, Jake Jewell, who was recalled, optioned, and designated for assignment. Good for you, buddy. Welcome to the Cubs. Also, they brought uh, they brought up Alfonso Rivas, first baseman. I uh, brought him up from the Iowa Cubs. He debuted in the uh, 
series finale against the White Sox. And they also placed uh, second baseman David Bodie on the 10 day IL with a right ankle sprain. So the kid got two, uh, two hits in his uh, debut. Yeah, good for him. I mean, look, yeah. brand new, brand new player up to the Cubs. I mean, playing first, uh, Schwindel. They got him over there. I think he would he, he DH. I don't know, he man. DH. Look, a lot of these young bucks come out of nowhere. Never heard of them before. Um, and uh, good for them getting their cup of coffee with the Cubs. Uh, the Cubs, they did win the second game of the final Crosstown Classic series of the 2021 season. Patrick Wisdom is on fire. Yeah, he is. Rafael Ortega hit a grand slam, and Alec Mills pitched into the ninth to help secure the win. Yeah, he had a great pitching performance. He uh, blanked out the White Sox. So. And and don't forget, Alec Mills did have that no hitter last year. So I mean, like, he's, yeah, he's no bum. Yeah, he's, he's a not pre- a bum. He's a pretty good. Uh, he's a pretty good pitcher. Pretty good. And uh, the most interesting game of the series came in game one where the Cubs put up six runs to start the game. Yeah, I was there. And somehow the final score was <laughs> 17 to 13. White Sox, what the hell? So the fourth place Cubs scored six times in the first inning against uh, White Sox starter Dallas Keiko, but they couldn't hold on against a powerful White Sox lineup. Wisdom homered twice and drove in four runs for the Northsiders on his 30th birthday. Yes, sir. And Michael Homosillo hit a uh, solo shot to go along with two impressive catch- catches in center field. Yeah, he robbed a couple. Uh, Wisdom and Ian Happ connected in the ninth against former Cubs closer Craig Kimbrell before he fanned Austin Romine for the final out of the game. Great game to be at. Um, not a good start because I was upstairs in the 500 section because my friend won tickets. And uh-huh. uh, I was like, I want to go. And I'm like, all right, cool. Um, yeah, Keiko did not look like the Keiko of old, giving up six runs in the first inning. I don't understand what what is going on with this guy. Uh, yeah, I don't. I think it's mental. I think it's mental because he's not hurt. He, yeah. he hasn't said that. He came out of press conference. He said, "There's nothing wrong with me." You know, as far as when it comes to my my physical, it's just he's a. I got a. He's got the yips. He, yeah, he's got the yips. And you know what's weird was that he, you know, he had a little bit of that uh, in in Houston towards the end. One of the reasons why they didn't really bring him back, he over, he went over and had that stint with uh, the Braves for you know just a cup of coffee. Right. At the same time that the Cubs ended up getting Kimbrel. Those are because remember that was the year when they had those two uh, free agents kind of floating around for a while, and they were big name pitchers. Right. And uh, yeah, the Cub, the Kimbrough ended up going to the Cubs, and Dallas Keuchel ended up going to the Braves before coming a free agent when the the Sox scooped him up. So. Um, I really thought that he was going to be the John Lester of the White Sox for this team, but I mean, I feel like that's not, not really all. happening right not now. Not at all right now. So the White Sox going to have to monitor Keiko's next couple of starts as he has been the weak link in the starting pitching rotation since the All Star break. He's had eight starts, one win, four losses, an ERA of seven thirty two in forty innings. He's given up forty three hits, thirty two earned runs, and ten homers. And he's at my fantasy league, so he's making me tank. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what to say about that. Uh, so this is what he had to say about um, when he was asked about fighting for his playoff roster spot. I definitely think it's fair to say I'm fair to say I am open and honest with everything that I say and do. And shoot, I've been I probably I've been probably not probably I have been the weakest starter in the rotation for most of the year. That just speaks volumes to the advancements of Cease, Rodon, being the guy that everyone expected him to be. G. Little and Lynn have been themselves, and it's just me kind of bringing up the rear. You ain't bringing up nothing, bro. Of course, I think about it. It's whatever is what everybody plays for. Once you get a taste of the postseason, that's all you want to do from from there on out. So I've definitely thought about it, but letting myself get rolled up into that idea is the worst of my worries right now. I just got to make sure that I'm myself come October 3rd, the last game of the year, whatever happens, happens. But I've always been a team first guy. So if it doesn't work out, I'm going to be as mad as whoever else isn't on it. But at the same time, if you're not getting the job done, don't expect a spot if you're not pulling up the numbers and doing your job. That's just accountability. He knows what's up. If he sucks, he sucks. He wants to get better. He'll do it. If he doesn't, he's going to be exactly where he's at. Here's your example. Lopez lost his, lost his fifth uh, mm-hmm. rot- uh, st- uh, spot in spring training. In the rotation, sure. yep. He's been in Schaumburg the entire, most of the year. Dude. They called him up because they had like a double header or something. Ever since then, he's been lights out. He is yeah. not allowed to run. Look, I mean, what did we, I don't think we knew what to expect out of Lopez once he lost that spot. And, no. And, and he's been very good. Um, 
coming out of the bullpen. Long starter. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? You're sh- yeah, your stretch starter. And, uh, you know, good good for him. Look, that sometimes that's what it takes for you to reach rock bottom. As I say, that's the game. Sometimes you got to take a step back just to get your bearings in order and then come back strong. Well, and again, we got to remember, we have a whole new pitching staff as far as the uh, coaches. The yeah. So he probably got some great, you know, mechanics change. He got his mechanics change and great coaching does that. I think you know the the a big thing that you know we didn't see coming at the beginning of the season and we talked about it a little bit too is Rodan. Mm-hmm. Rodan yeah. losing his spot and then you know or, or just kind of making it mm-hmm. and you know he's definitely stepping up this year. Lance Lynn has been refreshing for the White Sox where they had a, a guy come in from another team who wasn't completely busted out and 157 years old already. Mm-hmm. They got a good free agent that they're now holding on to from a couple more years. And Giolito, who you know really flamed out with the Nationals, has has built up a career for the South Side. And, and you the, know the funny thing is that Cease has the best pitching stuff out of all of them. Oh, he absolutely. He does. just hasn't matured yet. And he's just he's the young buck, so mm-hmm. you know he's the guy that could definitely become, if not your number one, your number two, mm-hmm. you know, going forward. Because you also have to see what's Giolito going to be in the future. Right. Okay, that would be, I think, realistically, your best shot. Uh, Giolito and C being your one, two. I mean, I think that's where you would like to. What be. Giolito needs is some consistency. That's what he needs. But he's kind of like where, like Sale. He's had, he always has a rough first inning, and he, then he settles yeah. down. The issue is going to be is like, do you if Keiko flames out and then just stinks it up the rest of the year? Now you have a decision. You can let go of Keiko and then put all your priority into re-signing Rodan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Rodan's proven that he he deserves that money. He's proven that the, he deserves to be a a MLB starter and get paid like one. But mm-hmm. who else? I don't know who else is a free agent right now that's going to be a pitcher that you might want to target a little bit higher. Because yes, it'll be great for him. But do you really want to give him a long term contract based on the one year where he finally proved that he could be healthy? You probably get a three year. You know what I mean. And that's the thing is that you uh, do you want to sign him to a contract like that? And is he, is he going to want to sign a three year contract and not a five year? He wants to contract? stay here. He's he said all along. I mean, he's to stay here. He's he's a young guy. He's oh, like yes. twenty eight, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like a seven year contract in any team would take him to thirty five. Mm-hmm. A thirty three year contract only takes him to thirty one. He's gonna want that security. I think the true question is is his wife happy with him being here and doing what he's doing right now? She is. Because she's very vocal on Twitter, great. yeah. And you know, that's good for him. That that shows he's got a uh, system. All right, another player on the White Sox who just came back, Yasmani Grandal, homer twice mm-hmm. and drove in eight runs in his return from the injured list last week in game one of the Southside edition of the Crosstown Classic. The eight RBIs for Grandal matched the franchi- franchise record and career best for a switch hitter. He also doubled and singled, so he was missing a tri- triple for the uh, cycle, which would have been impressive. I mean, come on. All right, Grandal is the first catch to record multiple eight, eight reviews games <laughs> Your look Since <laughs> Rivies became official in 1920 According to ESPN stats uh, And information research He's also the fourth player since 1920 With two career, four hit, eight RB, eight RBI guy, games Joining Nelson Cruz, Mookie Betts, and Jamie Fox. Not the singer Jimmy Fox. Thank you <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've never met the singer Jimmy Fox, But uh, congratulations on that uh, You win the voice, I guess <laughs> um, hey, look, I, and I told you that Grandal was a very important part of this team. That's your veteran leadership on yep. the field every yep. game because you still have, you know, we know that a guy like Rodon, yes, he's not necessarily a, a, a young buck as far as, you know, like being 24, or 23, but he does need guidance because he has not played that much MLB baseball. You, got, you need someone to be able to handle a guy like Lance Lynn, who is a bit of a firecracker, okay? You need a guy that's going to be able to help uh, um, Keiko get out of this funk and figure out what yeah. the hell is going on with him, you know. And and Giolito is another guy that you want guidance for because he has had his troubles in the past. So Grandal being out there for you on most game days mm-hmm. is extremely important because we've seen what uh, you know our boy Tele Zavala's can do. Okay, <laughs> Zavala, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you need Grandal because as soon as he comes up there, what is he doing? He's smashing, and he's bringing confidence to the rest of the pitching staff. Yeah, and, and I agree with you with that. And the problem is that Collins was supposed to take the next step up because they're like, oh, well, you know, we'll let uh, McCann go, and Collins is going to step up, and he hasn't hit. And, and, and you saw what happened, how much they missed 
the catcher that they no longer had. Right. You know what I mean? They needed to find a way to get Grandal back up here because that, I'm telling you right now, he's going to be a very important part of the playoff run. Yeah, even when he wasn't hitting, he was getting on base because he had the most walks. Yes. So, yes. I mean, the White Sox, uh, let's, let's just hope that the dog days are, are, are done and uh, September they can turn it up because there's games like uh, on Saturday when they, when they lost and didn't score a run. Like, yeah. You have uh, the, a, the, a, the Cubs you, game, yeah. The, it was a point in offense, and you got zero runs against I, uh, you a, know, a team that's not that good. Go up and down your lineup and look at how many older guys versus younger guys are on this team. Okay? All the way around, you got Abreu, you got Grandal, and the rest are pretty young guys. I mean, who else out there? I mean, what your, your second baseman? Uh, Hernandez. And, and who has been all over the place. He's been all over the place. Yeah. He either strikes out, and you see him have it. It's very streaky. I, I, yeah, I very feel, streaky. I feel like... I feel like he's not exactly what the White Sox were getting, were thought they were getting. No, they, the, the the glove was there. We know the glove is there. That's not the issue. But I've seen I've seen him fumble a couple times. Yeah, too, where he was like, oh, I don't, you know what I mean. But, but then yeah. you also you also building chemistry on a field with a bunch of new guys. All right. So, so I mean, so you got him. You got uh, Abreu at first, mm-hmm. but then you go on the other side of the, uh, uh, the infield. Okay, you got Ta, who yes, you know he's very confident, but sometimes that can hinder him because he's going to swing at stuff that he shouldn't, mm-hmm. and he's going to try to do a move that you know maybe he shouldn't instead of being just fundamental. Like, just like Javi Baez. Just, yep. exactly. exactly. That's exactly the same the thing same, he has. And yeah. the same thing you got going on at third base. Okay, because Yuan has to come out of that funk. He had he, he's been on fire lately, but he did have a, a, a hitless streak going yep. for a while. He's another guy. He's getting out of his own. He's own very head. streaky. He had like a twelve game hitting streak right after he came out of that. Exactly. Right. I kind of feel like he gets in his own head though. Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing is that that's what I mean is you need these veteran leaders because you also got Lou Bob and Elo who have barely played this season. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you, you, you one guy that you don't have to <laughs> that you have to worry about. Is is your your boy that looks like Gromit? Oh, Andrew Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, I feel like this guy. He he just looks like he just jumped out of an airplane every time you see him. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> but but you know he's he's a he's got that quiet confidence. He can smash the ball and he's yeah. good defensively. Yeah, he's playing left. He's playing right. So, he's a first baseman. And he's a he's a one guy that I as a young guy I don't think needs to be like okay let me look out for this guy. No, he, he's taking care of himself. He gets the game. But all of these young Hispanic players, uh, I'm telling you. They need someone to look out for him, and and you, yeah, you got to bray you. But having Grandal there too is going to help that out a lot. You know, time. you know what's what's really going to help out, and and I'm taking a flyer here if uh, the Germanator comes back up and starts raking, mm. because he's not going to have any pressure because he's not going to be playing every day. He's going to be just coming for for pinch and hitting, pinch you know, hitting. That's you know it. What this reminds me of, remember, um, what is it a major league? You had the catcher. He's the old man. But uh-huh. He was the voice of reason and got everybody, you know, motivated and stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking at right here. <laughs> no, no. All right. Well, we'll see what the what the White Sox do. Uh, Cubs play. Uh, you got Minnesota this week. Yeah, I, don't uh, <laughs> I don't care. Hey, look. You asked me. You asked me last week if I was if I cared about this Crosstown Classic series. I mean, yeah. I didn't. Like I said to me. I said it, it, the thing that sucked for me is that you're taking away a baseball game from me every day. You know, I'm watching these two teams play together. It doesn't mean yeah, there's, anything. No, there's no baseball tonight, right? Yeah, a, a, there's no baseball tonight. You guys you guys sat there and celebrated with that, that garbage-ass BP I, cup or whatever. I, I, what, what was the, <laughs> that was stupid. I, 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 I was like, why is this even a, a thing anymore? Uh, look, congrats. <laughs> I guess we're number one this year. Yeah, I mean, like, and and the Good look, team. and and the thing was, it was like the game that you guys lost. It was just a complete failure. It was yes. just like you guys were falling asleep out there. Well, There's I think, no reason. I think they went out and partied <laughs> for what? Yeah, with that stupid right. Stupid yeah, stuff. that's what I think they did. <laughs> and then then they woke up all with hangovers and like didn't score any runs. Yeah. Oh boy! But, but but again, Mills Mills played his ass off. So I mean, good good for him. But congrats to Mills. He pitched his ass off. It's time to put this in the rear view. Yes, sir. And focus. Put your nose to the grindstone and focus on this playoff run. For sure. It is time to the the buck up or shut up. Absolutely, absolutely. This yeah. is the time, and and you can't take your your foot off the gas pedal now because we're moving. We're getting ready to move into September. Yeah. And this it, is go time. This is the time you got to get hot. And I know what Tony's been doing. He's been resting players here and there, like Tim Anderson uh, rested for Sunday's game. It's time. It's time to uh, to see what you got. I think he's gonna put some gas on that fire, though, for sure. September. We'll see what they do. But I think I trust him, TLR. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. You got to make sure that Kaiko can get, get his head out of his ass. Yeah. And do something because guess the same what? thing with the closers. That, that too. And, and I think that's just 
I, I think they're in the dog days. They're at that point where once you get ahead by so many games, you need to get that fire in your belly again. And when you're playing, you're not really playing that well against teams over 500, but you're feasting on teams under. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to hit that switch and figure it out. Okay, what are we missing here? What is the thing that we're missing to complete this puzzle? What's the last piece? You got fantastic bullpen. Right. You got good starters. So who who are who are the uh, who are the weak links right now? You know it's Keiko. Now you're moving um, your your boy that kept getting dropped. You're moving him up, uh, Lopez. You, Lopez. You're moving him up into the rotation right yeah, now because, because that's looking like. Because Bummer's been a bum. But you're also removing that from your bullpen. So you got Bummer's not playing well. You got uh, Lopez kind of moving up into into the uh, rotation. There's a little thing right there because there's your long reliever. So mm -hmm. you got to say crochet. Uh, all these guys that you have sitting around in the bullpen, they're all very talented players, and they can have a big impact on any game on any roster. Consistency. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to pull your ass up, play with a little fire underneath you, and get it done. Yeah, I, I think that's the problem with the, with the closures. They're like, oh, well, Kim Kimbrough has uh, over five ERA in, in the eighth inning, but a zero ERA in the ninth. Right, and I because he's a killer. I, I told you he's the closer. Yeah, I told you he's the closer. So uh, you, you're gonna have to go by committee. You like, need to match find up. that balance. Is what it is. You're gonna have to go they, by matchups. Yeah, they find that balance. They'll so. be okay. You know, some guys are gonna be really, really strong. Let them do the So those are the only two things right now. It's going to be the fifth starter and the closing issue. Those are the two issues right now. Str Look, this is one of the strongest uh, pitching stats that I've seen in a long time on either mm -hmm. side of town. Yeah. And you just got to get done, man. You got you, They all have to just focus. And, and that's what I said. Up and down, even with your starters, every single one of them has their ups and downs in the right. on the White Sox. And it, there's no one that's been 100% consistent, a killer in any mode. So you got to make sure that you get the right part of it that you're looking for and not that, you know, uneasiness that you can get. And the good part is you guys have a month to figure it out. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is true. this is yeah. This is the time to dig deep. This is done. this this is nut up or shut up. Mm -hmm. On that note, let's take a pause for the cause and hear a word from our sponsors. Oh well, there's strikes two and three right there. Thanks, Cubs. I think I'll perplex him with my slow ball. One, two, three strikes. You're out. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. <laughs> Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15. TrueFan15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast with E Rock, Big Z, and Gigantor. Yo, yeah. yeah. It's that time again, boys. Uh -oh. It's time for Stirring the Pot. Yes, sir. So today on Stirring the Pot, I'm going to take over. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, guys, I'm a chauffeur, which means I drive for a living, okay? So in my line of work, we usually grab and go when it comes to meals. What you are know, you grabbing? Food, <laughs> the drinks. At the truck stops. Yeah, like watch quick, it, watch it. A quick bathroom break, you know. Hey. <laughs> hey. hey. Glory, glory. Oh, no. <laughs> but you know what? One thing's intriguing me. So whenever I go to the Speedway, I see drivers, you know, truck drivers, limo drivers, all types of drivers, always gravitating towards these chips. Okay. Yesterday, I was I was doing a run. I go. I'm looking at the chips. There's one that's completely empty. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know. Finally find what I want. I get to the front, and these guys are like, oh, man, I was looking for these. They have them all in the front. There was none on the shelf. So he grabs three bags of chips. The guy behind him grabs two bags of the same chips. So I'm like, dude, everyone loves these things. I'm going to grab a bag finally and try them out. So here we go, guys. Okay. I brought these. Basically, these are the Speedy Choice Honey Flavored Cheese Puffs. So we're about to dig in, try them out, and then you can give me your yay or nay. Oh, boy. Now, basically, what they're supposed to be is like, you know, the Cheetos Cheese Puffs, but with the honey flavor. I don't know if it's a glaze. I don't know. What the deal is, but we're about All to right, so 
they look like regular cheese puffs, you know, the Cheetos cheese puffs. They're just a little smaller. The, the, the puffs, not the curls. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it smells like cheese. It smells like cheese. All right. All right, here we go. All right. Another one for effect. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I can see the sweet. Z, you go first. It tastes. I mean, the cheese is not powerful like a regular cheese puff, but there has that hint of honey in it. Mm, I, 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 I'm gonna give it a thumbs up because it's not bad. Fuck this shit, man. This tastes like some <laughs> some knockoff Fritos. The, you know the little honey barbecue twist that looks like rotini pasta? That's oh. what this, this tastes like a knockoff oh, of that shit. Oh, the, uh, what's that, honey barbecue? Honey barbecue. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. This, ta- this tastes like a knockoff of that, man. Come on, bro. Like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, why? What does that? Oh, that tastes like something that already exists. So, uh, good job making some fake shit, y'all. <laughs> I mean, I guess you got your sweet, you know, you got your cheesiness. I mean, I guess. I'm Depends. just I'm just gonna recommend you stop going to truck stops. <laughs> <laughs> you need little little finger shaped uh, foods there. What's going on? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, right in the testicles. Ouch, town population, you bro. <laughs> That's a lot of cheese there. All right, y'all. Before we go, what you looking at? What are you watching that isn't sports gigantor? So recently, I watched Unhinged, which is a movie with Russell Crowe. It's about road rage. Oh, um, yeah! I, I checked it out, not expecting anything big out of it. It it basically delivered. It was okay. <laughs> uh, it has some good spots. There's some good uh, jump scares and stuff like that. It's pretty messed up though. I thought at one point I'm like, oh, road rage. I might sympathize with this guy. Mm, nah. Now road rash maybe. <laughs> I, 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 I can understand from the but truck no. stop. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. This is all, what, this whole segment turns on the road again. What's going on here? On the road again. <laughs> Z, all right. Z, what are you watching? Uh, you know, I've, my shows are on a kind of hiatus. I've already mentioned the shows that I'm watching regularly. So um, I threw on a movie that I really, really enjoyed. I've seen it multiple times. Um, it is called Only the Brave. So it is a movie with Josh Brolin and Miles, uh, Miles Teller and Jennifer Connelly. Um, essentially, they're, they're uh, those wildfire fighters. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so Miles Teller is like a, a dumbass who couldn't get his life together, and Josh Brolin kind of like mentors him. And um, it's a really good movie because you see what they go through and how dangerous it is. And I Don't Want to Ruin the Movie is a movie you got to see. Um, might maybe have some tissue at the end. Okay. Okay. Not for the truck stop. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man! So what I watched this week is a movie called Vacation Friends. It's on oh, Hulu. Yes, it's uh, on my this, queue. This is with Little Rel Howry, uh, Yvonne Orji from. Uh, I'm guessing that's how you say her name. O R J I. That's Orji to that's me. Right. Um, she of is course from, it is from Insecure, uh, and also John Cena and Meredith Hagner. Da, uh, da, da, da. So yeah, could, could you um, see him? You could, you could. The camera did a very good job of uh, capturing on screen. I don't know how they did it. It's movie magic. But <laughs> so this is basically uh, Lil Rel and his wife. Uh, so his name in the movie is Marcus. And his wife's name is Emily. They go on vacation. They are getting, uh, you know, they begin uh, going out for a long time. And I think they're getting ready to get engaged. They meet John Cena and his wife. So that's Ron and Kyla, the other uh, uh, couple they meet up there. And they get into all this crazy stuff going on, and uh, and I I want to say John Cena and uh, Meredith, uh, John Cena and Meredith Hagner, the other characters are uh, clingers. They're they're level five clingers. So you get to see the kind of uh, very baseline uh, couple get uh, their life spun upside down by uh, by their vacation friends and, and how they kind of <laughs> stay into contact over all the years. So I definitely recommend it. Uh, it kind of caught me off guard. I'm not out there checking for Hulu uh, movies, but. Uh, I saw the preview and and it and it kind of sucked me in and it was a little bit different than what I was expecting it to be so I I give it a thumbs up. All right, all right. I, I got to give John Cena credit. He's kind of funny in a bunch of different movies. I didn't expect him to have that much range, but the one thing that bothers me is every most of the movies he's in, his name rhymes. Like in this one, he plays a guy named Ron. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that don't bother me. I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, it's like the guy from Fast and Furious. The uh, was a Hector. All his all his yes. movie credits is he's, Hector. He's always yeah. Hector. He's always Hector. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. First of all, can we stop making them damn movies? 
Fast Why? 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 Uh-uh. Why? Uh-uh. You're not ready for a fast ten. You're no, it's up. not. It's not about racing anymore. You know what it is? It it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Kind of like these fucking honey puffs that you made me eat. <laughs> what the? Hell? Uh, look, hey, that's it. I'm calling it. That's that's the show. That's the show. That's, that's the show. That's it. All right, y- y- y'all feel well, good nah, about nah, yeah. We, y'all feel good. We feel good, yeah, but yeah, like, let's I, tell cause these people that they got to join us next next week. I'm gonna m- tell you what. Uh, I need to get something to drink to wash this out of my mouth. Well, so since I you have a bad taste in your mouth. How about this? Oh, oh boy! Sunday, September fifth, Little Cups Field. We're gonna be doing the uh, the charity event. Absolutely, ten dollars mm-hmm. or whatever you want to give above that. Perfectly fine. Going to Office of Giannis starts at one p.m. Mm-hmm. We're doing the commentating. Yeah, so come on and join us, the comedians versus cops. So, uh, Which the, one do you want to be? You want to be the comedian or the cop next time? Oh, I'm I'm gonna be the comedian. Damn it! Why? Why? Hey, I want to be a comedian hey, the first time. Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have the junior police officer badge stickers that I can give you plenty. We'll put them all over. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Show them to the game Deputy. just like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, on, on uh, Sunday, September fifth, the comedians versus cops charity softball game. All, uh, like uh, Giganter said, all the proceeds are going to go over to Officer Yanez, uh, who was uh, injured in the line of duty. He is the uh, partner of Officer Ella French, who was tragically uh, gunned down in the line of duty. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's it's a really good cause coming out. Like you said, ten bucks uh, or whatever you can give would be great. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. I want to thank you so much for listening. A big thank you to our sponsors, 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, ACSI, and Grit Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast t shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TrueFan15 at checkout for 15% off of your entire order. That's TrueFan15. Go and get your shirts right now. Go get them. Also, don't forget to check out our new friends over at ACSI and uh, check out their career section for an exciting new career opportunity in the communications industry. Check out our Facebook page, too, for a job fair in your area. Shout out to the Shine Native Radio Podcast, now available on all major platforms. Mike Logic, Ideal, Throw MC, and Words talk about sports, movies, and all types of ill shit. Go check them out right now. And a special shout out to Mike Logic. His brand new single, Whiskey on the Rocks, from the upcoming album, as I was saying, is now available on Spotify. And I want to give a special shout out to our friends over at the Some of This, Some of That podcast. Go and check them out. Brand new. I think they got three episodes in right now. They talk about all types of uh, different topics, whether it comes to relationships, sports, movies, and just uh, general pop culture. Nice. Give them a check and uh give them a listen man Uh shout out to ronesh and shout out to panic for the beats we played on today's show check out panic on the beat.com for all your moment merch and gear and don't forget to check us out on social media you can find us at true shy fans on twitter that's at true chi fans on twitter and on tiktok find us on facebook instagram youtube spotify hit the dms with your stirring the pot your movie recommendations and tell us what you think of the show and you can also reach us at true chicago sports fans at gmail.com all right y'all for big z and gigantor this is e-rock we will see you next week for episode 61 until then be good to each other for love of sports be safe chicago yeah thanks cubs you <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> a few moments later you have a lot of incest that's real shut your mouth lover boy nature versus nurture lodge nature Always wins. I think he's on steroids. I'm it just depends. I'm just gonna recommend you stop going to truck stops. Joni loves Chachi. You are absolutely correct on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and eating little little pingo shaped uh, foods there. What's going on? <laughs> Whoa. Hasta luego, amigos. Shows over. Shows over. Shows over. <laughs>